Nuclear fusion joins atomic nuclei to release energy, while nuclear fission involves splitting atomic nuclei to release energy. There you go. That's nuclear fusion and fission. Let's explain this with an example. Imagine you're in a kitchen and you have a container filled with apples. You pick one apple and cut it into two pieces using a knife. What happens? You get two smaller pieces of the apple. Do you experience any release of some invisible energy? No, you don't. In this example, the apple represents an atom, say uranium, and the knife that cuts through the apple represents a neutron. This neutron collides with the atom at a very high speed, making the atomic nucleus unstable and ultimately dividing it into stable nuclei. An enormous amount of energy is released during the nucleus splitting process. Nuclear fission is a process in which a heavy nucleus of an atom is split into smaller, lighter, and more stable nuclei by a neutron that collides with the parent atom at a high speed. The smaller atoms produced through this process are called fission products. In nuclear power reactors, uranium-235 and plutonium-239 are the most commonly used elements for fission reactions. The collision of the neutron with the atom can also produce additional neutrons, which can then collide with more atoms, starting a chain reaction and releasing an enormous amount of energy. What's the significance of this energy, you ask? Well, the energy thus released heats water into steam, which in turn spins a turbine to produce clean power. Nuclear fusion is essentially the opposite of nuclear fission. In nuclear fusion, two small, lightweight atoms are made to fuse or join together under extremely high pressure and temperature conditions, forming a heavier, more stable nucleus. To continue the kitchen example, Fusion is when you take a slice of an orange and a slice of an apple and squish them together to make a new fruit. Nuclear fusion is a process that occurs on the core of the sun and other stars, a process that powers them and will continue to do so for billions of years. During this process, two isotopes of hydrogen combine under extremely high pressure and temperature conditions to form a helium isotope. Brownie points to you if you can tell us in the comments which helium isotope is formed in the sun. Isotopes are different forms of the same element that have the same number of protons but different numbers of neutrons. We've already created a short 5-minute video that explains isotopes. You can find it linked in the description. Although the concept of nuclear fusion may seem straightforward, it's actually quite challenging to execute in a controlled manner. This is because it requires an enormous amount of heat and pressure to initiate and sustain. As a result, scientists are still studying fusion reactions and we have not yet reached a point where we can successfully and safely achieve and maintain them. There are some significant differences between fission and fusion. As previously mentioned, fission consists of breaking down a large nucleus into smaller ones, while fusion involves combining two lightweight nuclei to form a heavier nucleus. Fission uses uranium or plutonium isotopes as fuel, while fusion uses hydrogen isotopes. Both processes generate a significant amount of energy. The fission of one gram of uranium or plutonium per day produces around one megawatt of energy. This is equivalent to the energy produced by burning roughly three tons of coal or 600 gallons of fuel per day, producing approximately 250 kilograms of carbon dioxide. On the other hand, nuclear fusion reactions produce three to five times more energy than fission. While nuclear fission produces energy that is used to create clean, carbon-free electricity, we are still working on developing techniques for successfully achieving and controlling fusion reactions. Fission and fusion are also popular in sci-fi and pop culture. One of the most famous examples is the movie Spider-Man 2, starring Tobey Maguire as Spider-Man. In the movie, a nuclear fusion reaction goes wrong, and the lead scientist, Dr. Otto Octavius, turns into the movie's villain and tries to achieve another successful fusion reaction. Suppose you were in the shoes of Dr. Octavius, a.k.a. Dr. Octopus. Would you understand the magnitude of the damage to life and property caused by the first unsuccessful fusion reaction? Would you refrain from attempting the same reaction again? Or would you follow in Doc Ock's footsteps and try the same reaction again regardless of the consequences? What would you do? Tell us in the comments.